I saw Reality Works on the side and I was like, oh, it's gonna be something good. I'm Denisa Espinosa. I'm the um, vet science instructor and this is my teaching partner. Hi, I'm Melissa Barnett. I teach the animal science classes. This is our first year. We just opened Tech West in August. We have two career centers and agriculture is only offered at this one. And students can choose to come over here and usually it's because they have an interest in animals or they think they want to be a vet or they want to be in the agriculture industry in some aspect. It kind of just lets them kind of feel out of the industry before pursuing higher education or whatever their post high school looks like. The models have really helped us, especially like this year where we're not able to go places and have field trips and have guest speakers and do kind of all the normal things that we would do. And um, we're still able to get the kids a lot of hands-on experience as they go through our pathways. And then it's gonna prepare them a lot more whenever they're actually in the practicum course, because with the practicum classes, either in animal science or in the vet med, they go out and they get an internship. And so we're trying to give them as much opportunity and experience and just getting their hands on things, getting to visually see things as possible before we send them out into the industry. I think we have almost all of your animal models and we've used uh, the animal models more than a handful of times and the students have really gotten familiar with them. It was really fun for them to be able to, instead of just learning about the muscular system and labeling the diagram in their notebooks, they actually got to like do some research and um, do some problem solving with each other, trying to figure out, is this a deep muscle or a superficial muscle? Is this actually the right muscle that I'm looking for? Um, but we've utilized them quite often and the students always have such a great time. Um, the first time that we used them and they realized that they opened up um, and that they had organs and things in them, it was like a scavenger hunt puzzle day. Um, they were so excited to be trying to put them back together in the right way and it was such a great way for them to kind of learn without even knowing that they were learning and they really have thrived learning with them. We really do love using them um, to give our students some hands-on practices. We try to have live animals um, in, our, in our classes when we can, um, but obviously we're not gonna want to put little sticky notes all over a dog, um, a real dog, to label all of the muscles. And so we love how the animal models especially um, are able to kind of have a skin deep look and then a deeper look into the anatomy um, so we're not just always coloring um, diagrams and labeling stuff in our notebooks or online but they're actually being able to manipulate something which is awesome and i had one student in particular that was such a visual learner um, and had some uh, accommodations and special needs going on and like whenever we finished working in class he would always be like can i go take apart the chicken it was a really great visual for him in a he would just go every day and take it apart and learn and say what organ he was holding. And that's how he learned. And he really thrived um, in my class by doing that. And he, it was a completely initiated on his own. Like if he finished work, that's where he wanted to go and work on and see. So that was really, really cool to watch and kind of experience with him. We also have the um, AI simulator as well. And we also have the cattle injection simulator. And, and we used that so much last semester. Um, our kids learned to halter on um, on it. We haven't done injections with it yet, but I'm super excited to do injections with my vet med students um, on the, the cow this year. Um, we did ear tagging on it. Um, and when we found out that all the ears were like replaceable, oh, we, were, we were so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Usually we were um, using like just pieces of leather for them to ear tag but they kept like looking over to the cow. They were like, are we gonna ear tag the cow? Or is she just gonna like talk about it? And I was like, okay, like each one of you, here's an ear tagger and here's some ear tags. Like we're gonna figure it out. We used our injection cow a lot last semester. We love them. Obviously we could have dogs and cows in the classroom every day we could and we do and we can. Um, but I would not want to subject um, some poor cow to, to be haltered 50 times. Halters put upside down and have slip knots being tied all the time. It's being able to have it be a little bit more realistic in terms that we're using the properly sized halter for this animal. Um, and we're not just like practicing haltering on a stuffed dog um, with a sheep halter. We're actually practicing on a relatively life-sized um, head of cattle with an actual cattle halter. Um, so you get to see really how much slack in the rope do you have? How much room do you actually have to make your slip rope 
or your slip knot. And then like Ms. Espinoza said to not, like we do bring my horses in the classroom or well, we bring my horses to the outside pens outside. Classroom. Having the students practice on the models first of like haltering, um, especially like um, on the cow head that does the injections and the ear tagging, um, it really saves my horses kind of the frustration or the, you know, just uh, the fumbling as students start to figure out like, how do you put the halter on or how do we slide it over the nose or, you know, as they juggle it up on their nose or on their ears, whatever. Um, it's so whenever they do get the chance to have a hands on experience, it's a little more like meaningful. They can go in there and work with the horses because they're confident already working on the models. When we do have live animals here, like Melissa said, it makes it a lot more comfortable for them. They don't feel like it's something they've never done before. Um, they feel a lot more um, like secure in their knowledge and are able to then, I think, get more out of those experiences when we are able to have live animals. I, I actually had no idea when we got them that they came with curriculum. I was just thrilled about the models. And when I was unpacking them, Melissa was like, wait a minute, they all have curriculum with them. And it was like extra Christmas day. I, I love the fact that they match the actual like thing that the students are looking at. Like we do have a lot of curriculum that we've already had from previous years, but using pieces of the curriculum that comes with the models that is specific to the models, I think, um, makes when we are using them for um, like identification purposes or review stuff or like the quizzes and exit ticket things. I think that it's like very seamless with the students. They're not like, oh, I can't tell because the picture on the PowerPoint is not at all the same like shape or color or, or anything that the model that we're looking at is, but they, they're they supposed to go with them. So it's, it's really easy to integrate when we are using them. But we use them kind of as the uh, notes and go through that, talk about it, and then we have the, you know, the models that we take apart as we go so we can say like here's where everything is in the animal and then there's some like worksheets and quizzes that I let them do after just to kind of review and refresh and always leave the models out for them to go through and put things together while they're, you know, showing the direction that food moves through the rumen and the rumination process. Like those have been really, really beneficial for the ruminant um, going along with the cattle, goat, and sheep digest and digestion. And I think too, the longevity that we're able to use them year after year, because we do also, like we do dissections um, in some of our animal science and advanced in the vet med classes, but those are, they provide good experiences. They're kind of expensive and it's a one-time use. Um, with these guys, we're able to just sanitize, reuse them year after year and still see things. Um, so the longevity of being able to continually use them and not having to like repurchase them every single year really helps out our classroom budget so we can prioritize certain dissections that maybe we can't do with the animals per se, but that um, it just really helps and kind of saves our budget and still gives them that same experience and it's a consistent experience over and over. We are really thankful that we have all of the models, not just the animal models that we use, but even the um, like injection simulator and ones like that. They really just love any opportunity they can to have some type of hands-on engagement.